In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make sun rays in your landscape photography using Luminar 3 so you can start editing and producing professional landscape photos. Coming up. Now in this video specifically, we're really going over some post-processing techniques you can do to create those nice, dreamy sun rays in a landscape photograph, even when you're shooting at the sun, but you don't necessarily have the right condition for sun rays. You can still produce post-processing techniques for those sun rays. And I'm gonna be using Luminar 3 to produce these in this photograph that I shot. This is the raw file that I shot going out in the field. I'm gonna show you how you can make it like this and produce those nice sun rays. So what I wanna do is jump into Luminar and really go through the processes with you of what to look for when you're adding sun rays, how to produce this in Luminar so that you can start doing it in your own photography and make it look really realistic. So let's go ahead and jump right into the computer screen and start doing this. All right guys, this is the Luminar 3. It looks glorious, it looks beautiful. The Luminar 3 with libraries, I love it so much and the organizational features. This is the image that we're gonna be working with today to produce sun rays. Now, the name of the game with sun rays, as with most landscape photography post-processing, is keeping everything looking realistic or as realistic as we can. And that's whether or not you're producing something that wasn't there using like artificial intelligence or multiple photos that you're blending together, or if you're a purist in landscape photography, a purist who loves to shoot exactly what was there. So the name of the game, especially for like sun rays, is keeping everything realistic. That means shooting in the direction of the sun. You don't wanna just be moving in a different direction and shooting in a dark part of the sky and then throwing a sun in there and trying to make it look like the sun was there and, and you had all these crazy sun rays going on. The name of the game is keeping things realistic. So if you look at the top of this photo, we have a really bright spot up here where the sun was. And also if you wanna check out Luminar 3 a little bit more, there's a link to that below in the video description if you wanna look into that software more for your post-processing. It's what I use, I love it so much. Uh, it just makes everything really easy and the, the Luminar 3 with libraries makes everything really easy to organize. But like I said, the name of the game is shooting towards the sun, making sure you have a directional flow of sunlight coming at your camera to shoot those sun rays. Now, the second thing that you need to remember is that sun rays require a specific type of atmosphere. Atmosphere in like foggy weather where sun rays and that light refracts off the little droplets of water that are hanging around in the air. So what we want to create that atmosphere in our images, and if it wasn't there, this is how you do it. What we're gonna do is go to add filters, and I'm gonna go to fog, and the fog filter is gonna come up. So I have two selections here. I'm gonna choose light fog because I want that light fog to be showing up like really airy and dreamy and have uh, be able to produce light rays coming through it. And I'm just gonna bring that amount up just a little bit. And that's just gonna create a little bit of haze in this image that we can use to make sunlight coming through that fog look a little bit more realistic for our landscape photography, creating that atmosphere for the sun rays. Also, I'm just gonna add a preset real quick to this. I'm gonna add autumn colors. I shot this in the fall in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So I like how this affects my fall colors. It makes everything a little bit more yellow, a little bit more orange. It looks like fall here, and that's what I'm going for with this image. So to create these sun rays, I need a new layer to do that. Why do we use new layers? Well, I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer, and this is just so that I'm not tampering with anything in the layer below it. We're putting sheets on top of each other. The bottom layer is like our Mona Lisa. The layer above it is like a sheet of glass we're putting over top that so we can draw on it, we can do whatever we want. And if we mess that up, we can remove that so that we're not having to go back and hit Control Z or undo and remove everything we've done and then rebuild it. We're just having that new layer on top and making these changes to it. I mean, right, do we want to make changes and then have to do all that backing up and then forward and it's just nonsense. So we just make a new layer to make it as easy as possible for us to go ahead and do that. And then from my filter, I'm gonna select sunrays. So the sunrays option comes up 
and we have our sun rays in the image. Now they're really hard to see. They're right here, really small in the image right now. And this great brings up a great point because as I move this around with my X and Y tools, you'll see like one of the great things that Luminar does is use their artificial intelligence to find edges or hard edges where the sun is going to peek through. So watch as I move this through, you're gonna see like if it's behind this bush right here, it's only gonna come through in the gaps of the bush. Or if I move it out from behind that, it's visible. So it's using that technology that people who are smarter than me put in there so that I could use it to make my landscape images look better, right? I mean, we don't have the technology to do that, but we're gonna use it to make our images look better. So what I'm going to do here is find the location of where that sunlight is peeking through using my X and Y sliders. So I'm just going to adjust this to put that sunlight coming in right where I have the brightest part of light coming in from the sky. Really easily done, you just put it right there. I have a tree in front of it, so it's kind of making those sun rays splash out from behind that tree. Looks pretty cool already, right? Well, we're gonna adjust some of these sun rays so that they look even better and more realistic to our landscapes than they already do. So what I'm gonna do is play with the rest of these sliders using my amount, like a mount that is going to be refracted. I don't wanna go crazy and go this much, although that does look kinda cool. I'm gonna dial this back down a little bit just to make it look a little bit more realistic. It's just peeking through on the top edge of this image. Then I'm gonna play with my look. How, how like dreamy and landscape-esque do I want this to look? Do I want the bottom to be kind of like dialed down and darker? I think I do create a little bit more atmosphere in there. The number is going to be the number of amount of sun rays that are peeking through. I mean, this varies from photo to photo. You wanna keep it looking realistic, like the sun was actually peeking through. So use your judgment on this, on how many sun rays you want to show up. I think right around there looks pretty good for this image. And then the length of the sun rays, you can also adjust. I'm gonna bring these about to basically where they were. I'm gonna warm these up a bit, add some more like orange or warmer tones to it. The radius of how much like glow they have, I'm gonna keep that kind of low because I want these to be subtle sun rays that we're using in our landscape image to really like maintain that realistic look. I know I've said that a ton, like realistic, 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 but that is the name of the game in landscape photography editing. And then glow radius, I mean, you can play with that too on the sun rays, like how much do the sun rays glow, glow amount. You have so many options here. This is fantastic to use because you can make this look as perfect as you want it. The warmth overall, and then the penetration and the randomization options that you have are like the most important things that you can adjust here for your sun rays. And what do I mean by that? Well, penetration is going to be how much are they penetrating from your scene. Are they gonna be penetrating like a ton and it's gonna be blown out or that's just gonna be like a really subtle look? Again, it varies for image to image. I'm gonna have these kind of penetrating through and looking pretty cool like that. And then randomization. What I'm going to do for randomization, even though the artificial intelligence does a great job of peeking those sun rays out from behind hard edges and kind of having them shining through to the rest of my image, what I'm going to do is adjust that slider up on randomization until I get my sun rays coming out from behind individual trees. And this is gonna take a little bit of work and a little bit of like tedious sliding on this slider, but I want this tree to be secluded and have rays coming out on either side, this one too, and even this one, and maybe some through here on the left side of the screen. So what I'm going to do is just slide this up and try to randomize this as best as possible to get these sun rays just poking out on the edges from these trees. Because when you do this, you don't want like a sun ray coming in right over top of a tree. That's not realistic. You want that tree to be in a gap of rays creating that refraction of light coming through your atmosphere. So again, we're just pulling this playing around with these sun rays, kind of making like this glow in our image that we can use. So as I pull this up, this looks pretty good. I'm at a 57 on this randomization. 
this tree right here is kind of peeking out. It's kind of secluded. And then I have some bands of light coming out on either side of it. This has some bands coming out and like highlighting these trees right here. It looks pretty realistic to me on, on what it looked like when I was at this scene. So I'm gonna stick with this right here. And then if you don't want as much sun rays coming through, you can reduce this filter amount and kind of get the look that you want right in the image. So I'm just gonna leave it all the way up because I like this glow of sun rays coming through and the subtlety that it provides in my images. So to show you, I'm gonna turn off the sun rays filter. This is what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after. You have a darkening down here of the foreground with this swirl and then you have sun rays coming in. Again, this is before and this is after. And then we'll do the before and after slider of the very first image we used. And this is the before and after of that. Thanks so much guys for watching. Can't wait to see you next time. I'll see you later.